Welcome to another example from chapter 8. So as we read every problem that we come across, we always want to be drawing the situation as we go and making a list of the information as we go. And so that's true here as well. So we have a 30 gram pellet. So we'll call that mass one, 30 grams, we need to turn into kilograms. So we divide by 1000, we get 0 0.030 kilograms. And it's traveling at an initial velocity of 160 meters per second. And it sticks in a two kilogram block. So that block was just stationary, not moving. That's our second mass. And it's going to have a collision with that block. So the second mass that we learn about is two kilograms. And it is, we're not being told that it's moving. It's just sitting there. And the picture was on the um, lecture slides. So the initial velocity is zero. And then because there's a collision, we know that we need to have momentum conservation. But what's important for us to recognize right away is that momentum conservation will be able to tell us a speed after the collision. But this is asking about the distance the block slides. Because there is something else also happening in the problem besides just the collision, this is what's called a two-step problem. Now, this is probably the toughest but also the most important problem type to come out of chapter 8. A two-step problem could be one of two different possibilities. The first possibility is that stuff collides, collision, and then other stuff happens. Or, and that's what this example is, or there could be stuff that happens and then a collision. What's important for us to recognize in both of these cases is that the end of step one becomes the start of step two. Whether that collision is the first step or the second step, in a collision we use momentum conservation, and when other stuff happens, in these particular types of problems, we'll be able to use energy conservation to answer the question. But we could use other physics as well. If we know what the velocity was at the beginning, this kind of problem, we might recognize friction force as being something that feels like from chapter four, and we've had a problem like this where we had to get the acceleration and then the distance the block slides way back in chapter um, four and five when we had the bale of hay problem in our lecture slides. But what we will find and what I will show us on this example problem is that it's going to be quicker and easier to use our newer chapter seven ideas for the stuff that happens. So collision, chapter eight, other stuff happens, chapter seven. Stuff happens, chapter seven, and then collision, chapter eight. We will see examples of each of these two step problem types. All right, but back to what we have now determined is gonna be step one out of two, which is the collision. So we will use our standard collision equation. And because they stick together, we know that they are gonna have the same final velocity. So V final because they stick together. So I'm gonna make a note of that because we always wanna make sure we recognize the kind of always true statements we can make. If something sticks together, if two objects stick together, they have the same velocity when they are stuck together. V1 final is equal to V2 final, which is equal to just a generic VF. All right, so let us write down what we have. 0 0.03 times 160 plus two times zero. If we add those masses together, we have 2.03 V final. 
So this goes, uh, this two times zero goes away. On the left, we just have 4.8. So then we'll divide both sides by 2.03 to get that velocity by itself. And that's going to give us 2.36 meters per second. So that is the speed immediately after the collision, but before things start to slide. After collision, so end of step one, but the start of step two. The most important thing that we can really truly convey is that in a two-step problem, there are no shortcuts. You have to do both steps separately, and you have to use the result of step one in step two. So this is going to be an energy balance problem now. So energy balance. And so if we think about our energy problems, we know that we want to draw a picture before and after. So in this case, we have a block with a pellet in it of mass 2.03 2 kilograms that is moving with a speed of 2.36 meters per second. That's the beginning of our step two. The collision has already happened. It is starting to move. And the end of our problem is this same block and pellet stops moving. We're at rest. We, we slide to a stop. So we have seen these kinds of problems back in chapter seven. This is our before situation. And this is our after situation. And the other important thing that we need to make sure that we're thinking about is that friction is acting here, so there is going to be a work term. So the friction force is acting here. Now we know that in our chapter seven problems, we should keep track of all the information we have with a before and after a little table where we keep track of the answers to yes and no questions. Kinetic energy, potential energy from gravity, potential energy from a spring. Now I'm running out of space, so I'm going to scroll down. So we have here that if we ask ourselves, are we moving at the start of step two, the start of our new problem, the answer is yes. We are moving with that speed of 2.36 meters per second. We ask ourselves, are we moving at the end of this step? The answer is no, because we were told that we slide to a stop. We ask ourselves, are we higher? We're just on a flat surface, so there's no change to the potential energy of gravity and there are no springs in this particular situation, so we have no's to those answers as well. When we ask ourselves about the work term, the answer is a definitive yes, not only because we know in our drawing that we have friction, but also because we started with energy and we've run out of energy, so something had to be taking our energy away. The work term, as we remember, hopefully, is force in the direction of motion, which in this case will be negative 5 newtons times the distance that we slide, and that is the unknown that we're solving for. All right, so we have our standard energy balance equation. Energy before plus work added is equal to energy after. And we asked ourselves all of those yes or no questions so that we could get all of the terms that might be important here. Normally, I tell us to write out all of those zeros, but because I am running out of space, I'm going to simplify to the one term that I know is non-zero. So 1 half mv squared, and I'm going to plug in those numbers. The m is 2.03 kilograms. The V is 2.36, and that's going to get squared. And then the work term 
force in the direction of motion. It's 5 newtons, but it's opposite the motion. So we have negative 5 times our unknown distance, d. And then if we look at the whole column on the right side of the after situation, all of that is 0. All right, so I can simplify this. And so the energy before term, the kinetic energy, we can get a value for in our calculators. On the left, we have 5.65 minus 5d equals 0. We can add 5d to both sides and then divide by 5. And we get our final answer of 1.13 meters is our distance that we're looking for. And that's it. That's the whole problem. So if we look back at this, this is a two-step problem where we could not skip either step. It had to be done in order. The end of step one became the start of step two. And then we had a momentum problem all by itself and separately an energy balance problem all by itself. And so we're using two chapters worth of understanding, which makes these types of problems an excellent test question. And... Um, the algebra itself is not very complex, but the physics is important to understand. We'll see a couple more of these coming up soon, so I will see you in those next videos.